Make your major move. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. Warning. I'm not a financial advisor. Don't blame me or any other random person that gives you some money tips for any of your financial decisions. I provide information based on research that may guide you to taking a deeper look at a particular company. However, in no way am I suggesting to invest or not invest in that company. Your decisions are that of your own. I present information that is readily available on the internet and I piece together the story to create and provide a more holistic concept to create a bigger picture. This information is for educational purposes only. Ultimately, I'm a guy in a Spider-Man mask and you should not take financial advice or information from me. Good morning, good morning, good morning everybody. This is take two of my video. You can probably still hear the sleep in my voice. It is now 5.55 a.m. and this is take Two. Welcome back to my spot, everybody. I'm Mr. Man. I'm sure you know who I am. And if you don't, get to know this face. All right? Like it, love it, enjoy it. Let's enjoy our time together. Today, we're going to be talking about some interesting things here. My microphone is falling on me here. Don't mind that. I'm just trying to fix this son of a bee up here. So today, I'm taking a look at Cypherium. Um, I had some, I've heard some things about these guys before. I know they're working with the Fed. I know they're the CEO or the co-founder works with um, Fifth. Um, these guys seem to offer enterprise uh, grade DLT. So let's learn a bit about them. Cypherium is a highly scalable and permissionless blockchain platform with a hybrid consensus mechanism that utilizes both POW and hot stuff Byzantine fault tolerance. Proof of work, all right, POW proof of work. So here they talk a bit about themselves in this video here. Let's, let's just, is it this video or was it this video? All right, this video right here. The advent of blockchain technology has brought about a structural reconstruction of business and technology. Blockchain fundamentally and innovatively addresses the numerous drawbacks of traditional transactions. From their insecurities to their inefficiencies, led by projects like Facebook's Libra, the DCEP. That's not it. So I'm just on their about page here. I believe it's this video here. Let's try that again. Cypherium is the first ever public blockchain that supports instant transaction finality and Turing complete smart contracts. Today, several blockchains are reverting to centralized technology to meet the needs of modern businesses. While centralized systems are fast, they leave minimal control in the hands of the public market while diminishing the value of blockchain. As the first ever public blockchain and smart contract platform supporting instant transaction finality and enterprise grade throughput, Cypherium is focused on maximizing blockchain scalability and speed without sacrificing decentralization. Through our innovative hybrid consensus, our platform is capable of processing thousands of transactions and smart contracts per second under real network conditions. Here's how it works. A miner searches for a proof of work solution. Once it finds one, the miner broadcasts the node back to the validator committee. Yeah, that's wonderful. Okay. So the videos look pretty good. Fantastic. So here, let's, here we go. Meet our executive and business team. So let's see who their executive team is made up of. We have Sky Guo, we have Dr. Solomon Zhang, we have Dr. Solomon Zhang, we have Sky Guo, and you go back and forth. And until I read the name, like I legit was just going doing this, going back and forth like this. And I was like, okay. I'm like, why do all these motherfuckers look just like the same person? Because they fucking are the same person. <laughs> like you have Dr. Solomon, Solomon Zhang and Dr. Sky Guo here. And that's all you have here. He's a blockchain advisor, Cakes, Cakes and uh, Media, where we go, media columnist, NASDAQ blockchain analyst. Fantastic. You have Dr. Solomon Zhang here. Here's their, their excellent advisors. All right. Same thing. This guy is this guy. Javier Farvan. Javier Farfan. That's it. And then you have this guy here, Vic, Victor T. Samuel. 
You have two guys. The team is comprised of two individual Chinese guys. I assume they're Chinese. I, I don't know. If they're not, my bad. They don't look Korean to me. They don't look Japanese to me. They look like they are from China somewhere, all right? This guy says he's from the University of China. I'm sure he's from China as well. These two, two Indian guys, yeah, not, not American guys. Why does that matter? Because these, this, this is the Chinese firm from China operating within New York, I, I believe it is. Uh, is it down here? Yep, operating within New York, right here. We work 36th Street, New York. Um, and here's what becomes very, very interesting. Uh, they are uh, uh, partnered by the Federal Reserve of the United States. I have to make sure I say the United States. The Federal Reserve of the United States. This company here. All right. So I figured, okay, let me pull up some information about these two mofos here. Who are these guys? Who's Dr. Solomon Zhang? Dr. Solomon Zhang. This is on Crunchbase. What the fuck is Crunchbase? So let me look, look a bit about Crunchbase. Crunchbase is a company providing business information about private and public companies founded in 07 by Michael Arrington. It includes tools for investment analytics, trend analysis, web traffic review, and marketing, and carries new regarding, news regarding startups. Well, let's take a look at the Crunchbase website here. What the hell these guys are all about? All right, our products. Crunchbase starters, search, track, and monitor companies you care about using best-in-class private company data. All right, so it offers different tiers. You have Crunchbase Cro Pro, Crunchbase Enterprise, and here's their customers, Huawei, Honda, Samsung, we know Plaid, and know Brex. All right, here's what thing people have to say about their website. They still have 75 million annual visitors. I don't know if that's truthful or not. I couldn't tell you. But here's their company, all right? You have the executive team right here. You have another executive individual members here. So you have a team. You don't have two people. All right, so who is Dr. Solomon Zhang? Dr. Solomon Zhang, before we get into that, here, here's this, this number here, the 80,000, just up under 81,000, that is algorithmic rank assigned to the top 100,000 most active people. He's 20,000, like, less than the most active people on there. He's not, he, he doesn't use this page. No one uses this page. This guy doesn't exist. He's like a ghost or something. His primary organization is Cambricon Technologies. Here's what becomes very interesting, okay? I'll give you a bit about him and I'll show you why it's interesting. Dr. Zolomon Zhang is the customized solution engineer at Cambricon Technologies. He's a PhD graduate at the University of Science and Tech of China, so they're Chinese, and visiting scholar at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Solomon possesses profound and expansive knowledge within the fields of cryptography and network security. Fan fucking tastic. His research spans artificial intelligence, AI, big data, state machine replication, and novel cryptographic protocols. I don't even know what this stuff is. Number of current jobs? One current job. What's, what is that current job? Is it Cypherium? Is it Cambricon? Hmm. Dr. Solomon Zhang is the customized solution engineer at Cambricon Technology. Additionally, Solomon Zhang has had one past job, one past job, as the co-founder of Cypherium. What do you mean past job? Isn't he still there? According to this, he's still there. And this is, here we go, copyright for 2002. But according to this, he is the co-founder of, of uh, Cypherium. His start date was 2016. His end date was 2017. His end date, okay? But that says 2002. This shows me that he still works there. He's one of the two executive team members. He's this here says he left. And he doesn't even use this site. He's the 80th, 80,000th, 81,000th in terms of active users on this site here, okay? So, here's his credentials, education here. That that that, that, that this tells me nothing about his uh, financial education at all. Anyways, so I figured let me look into this mofo here, Sky Guo. Sky Guo, that brought me to Right. So the reason it says is Sky Guo Guo Wenge because that brought me to this page here. I got heard an interview of Sky Guo and this individual here who uh, operates at the block does blockchain interviews for fintech. And that also brought me to this page here. 
Sky Guo, co-founder at Cypherium, will be representing blockchain sector at the 75th yeah, United Nations General Assembly. This is back in 2020. I don't find much current news on this company here. Most of the stuff I had seen is 2020. So, Sky Guo, a founding member of OMFIF. Who is OMFIF, you all might be asking? They are a big player. They're the official monetary and financial institutions forum. All right, they're a forum. They're a think tank, essentially. An independent forum for central banking, uh, e economic policy, and public investment has reportedly been invited to the UN to talk about how foreign policy experts can take advantage of the latest digital technologies to address the world's most pressing challenges or issues. And this guy here was invited to that, all right? So then it brought me up to the question, well, when I, when I searched up this guy's name here, Sky Guo, this name popped up also, Guo Wenge. And I was like, who the fuck is Guo Wenge? Pardon my language there. But it brought me to a website here, DOJ. This is, this is how my mind thinks. Like, I'll just go down different rabbit holes. It might not be all just one linear thought. It'll be quite dynamic and show me a broad spectrum of the world. Anyway, it's the DOJ's arrest Chinese billionaire over alleged $1 billion fraud scheme. <laughs> the Department of Justice arrest fugitive Chinese billionaire Guo Wenge, an, as an associate of Steve Bannon, who has ties to President, President, who has ties to Donald J. Trump. I don't see, a lot of people are like, you know, Trump this, Trump that, Biden this, Biden that. I want to say I'm non-biased. I either hover, hover in the middle or I hover on the outside. I keep an open mind about these things. I, I have no emotional investment to either side, uh, Democratic, Republic. It means no difference to me. I just want to see the facts, and I'll go where the facts tell me to go, and that's it, and I just follow them. I don't put any emotion in with my money. My money is, my money is here to make me money, and that's it. I don't put emotion into it. I don't get emotionally attached to it. So, driving the news, federal prosecutors in Manhattan allege Guo, uh, who is also known as Miles Kwok, promised thousands of online followers o outside followers outsized returns of if they invested in GTV and his other business entities. Prosecutors said Guo and members of his families used the money to buy a 50,000 50, square foot mansion, 3.5 million Ferrari, and $3,600,000 mattresses. What the fuck is this? <laughs> what the fuck? Is this like... Six mattresses that equal uh, $3,600,000 and these, or uh, 36000 sorry, and these mattresses are lined with gold and stuffed with, like, I don't know, the fucking, the most pristine animal's fur you've never seen before, that's why it's worth this much, or is it like just a bunch of, you know, $300 mattresses equating to $36,000 and a yacht. Guo was also charged for allegedly laundering hundreds of millions of stolen funds to conceal the conspiracy's illegal activities and continue to fraud operations. Wow, interesting, interesting, Guo. So, yeah, this, this talks a bit more about that, but here's where I want to get to again, okay? This is an ABC News about this here. Let's learn a bit about this. Asayed, let's learn a bit of, there we go. New York City, the mysterious fire breaking out in a luxury building just hours after the FBI arrest today in the early morning hours of an exiled Chinese billionaire and one time close ally of Steve Bannon. All day today, the questions was this fire in any way connected? And what authorities have just revealed tonight. Here's our investigative reporter, Aaron Katursky. Tonight, investigators are looking into a mysterious fire in a luxury high-rise on the Upper East Side of Manhattan that occurred just hours after the FBI arrested this exiled Chinese billionaire who once worked closely with Trump ally Steve Bannon. Federal agents taking Guo Wenge into custody just after 6 a.m. inside his $32 million penthouse. Six hours later, the agents were still inside when the fire started, forcing them to evacuate. Our units responded in less than four minutes. We encountered heavy fire and smoke on the 18th floor of this structure, which is 37 stories high. Guo splitting his time between the penthouse and this 50,000 square foot mansion, while federal prosecutors say he was orchestrating a billion dollar fraud, lining his pockets with the proceeds. His 152 foot, $30 million yacht Lady May is where Bannon was arrested back in 2020 
for allegedly defrauding investors of his We Build the Wall campaign. Bannon has not been charged in this case. We're told now that the fire was called in initially as smoke coming from a light fixture, but the fire marshal is now working to determine how it occurred, whether it was intentional. Otherwise, David, it is some coincidence. Aaron. From Kaczynski tonight, Aaron. Yeah, speaking of coincidences, I don't believe in those. This guy's arrested for a billion dollar fraud and his place goes up in smoke and stays burning for two hours on its own mm, before, anybody, before anything can get done. I want to know what was inside that building there. Yeah, that looks like a building. That's right, it doesn't look like a penthouse to me. The exterior looks like some mangled up, bashed in fucking building <laughs> that you'd find anywhere. Um, anyways, here's some interesting news too. California Gov Governor uh, Newsom announces new vision for San Quentin yeah, Quentin State Prison. We failed for too long. They're building a new fucking prison, a giant prison. Why? What's going on in California? I I, I know they, yeah, they've changed up some abortion laws out there. They got some interesting things going on in California, but this is where that takes me though. This is this is my barometer. It always leads me back here. Anytime I see news, I follow this guy and see what he's got going on there. Cause this is like this is the barometer here. J P Morgan. J P Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon knew. In 2008, that Epstein was a sex trafficker, their lawyer, other lawyers argue. And I'm going to pull up my trading view here and show you guys what I mean. <coughs> All right. I'm going to show you guys some charts here. I'm not a TA type of guy. I'm just learning this stuff here. Still, my um, my mentor is uh, CypherX. I still have some learning to do. But this man teaches and spits fire when he talks. He's so fluent with regards to the charts. So here... We're going to go back. We're going back to the dinosaur age here. I don't know why it only goes to 2020, but here's 2020. You can see them suffering around the 49.50 mark. Yeah, I said that's about 49.50, all right? So you can see here now what we're going through, or what we're going through, what they're going through, is you can see the separate, the downtrend here. This is, down, this is a downtrend. There's only three ways it moves. Down, sideways to accumulate, or up. And this is clearly a downtrend. And you can see the bottom of these here touching 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 you can see the uptrend of here you can see it getting wider here so you can see the a reverse wedge if you will and this motion here is what's called known as a dead cat's bounce and this is on the grand scale of thing grand scale of things so what happens after the dead cat bounces and then hits the balcony right here the last place of um uh, resi uh of resistance here he's going to be looking for a support for something to shoot him back up. I highly doubt that's gonna happen. He's gonna hit down here and then sink below. Does he come back to the 2020 um, space of uh, $49? Does he go back to the $49 or does he go further down? Irregardless, I'm telling you what I'm doing. Don't do what I'm doing. That's up to yourself. I'm not a financial advisor. When it sinks below this, I'm gonna snatch up as much as I can with this thing here. This particular investment fund, still offers 11.8% uh, dividends, how he's holding that up. Couldn't tell you unless that's a trap as well, but I'm gonna be looking at that. That's one of my plays. Let me close that, get out of this. So here, this says, all right. An attorney for the US Virgin Islands argues in federal court that JP uh, M. Chase CEO Jamie Dimon and ex-top bank exec Jess Staley were aware of the sex trafficking by the bank's notorious client, Epstein. The lawyer's uh, argument pushed back at JPM's move earlier this month to shift any legal responsibility for its business relationships with the late Epstein onto Staley. So JPM's like, yo, fuck you, it's not that guy. I got nothing to do with this. I don't want to be part of this at all, it's that guy. Meanwhile, this guy's in so many high-profile cases, and he just pushes things off. His company's also setting up shop in, um, in Florida. Why in Florida? There's no crypto taxes there, no capital gains from what I'm aware of. Jamie Dimon knew in 2008 that his billionaire client was a sex trafficker. A t attorney, Mimi Liu, uh, told Manhattan U.S. District Judge Red R Jed Ratcliffe Ratkoff at a hearing late Thursday referring to the year Epstein was first criminally charged with sex trafficking. This guy here is my barometer. That chart I showed you is my barometer of where we're at in the economy. Whenever you hear some big news coming up or something else, 
check this man here and you'll see where we're at all right you know we're getting close to it you know we're getting close to a huge black swan of something coming out um what that is i don't know how that looks i don't know how that plays out you'll see a big drop in the economy whether that's more bank bailouts whether that's um the bank bailouts eventually the fed's gonna be like yo you guys we can't do this anymore i lent you i loaned you guys money with interest you said you pay us back you can't pay us back how are they gonna pay you back the bank is failing how are they gonna pay this these, these huge 50 billion dollar loans with interest like, get the fuck out of here really 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 anyways eventually the the, the fed's gonna be like no nah, i can't do it these swap lines cut off cut the umbilical cord off so a lot of these banks are going to resort to what we know what is known as bail-ins a bail-out is when a bank or an entity bails out a company a bail-in your money's in the bank your money is the bank's fucking money you are bailing that bank in they will take that money and crash with it but they will pull out before they will line their pockets you better believe it so don't get stuck with that shit follow these guys here follow jb diamond follow jp morgan follow that case don't keep money in the bank unless you definitely direly need to keep money in the bank i keep enough money in, in my bank account for bills alone for to be automatic withdrawn other than that i have money in my exchanges ready to capitalize on cryptocurrency when that shit collapses back to the cypherium just to come back full circle i'm not sure what to think about that the one guy doesn't exist in the company any, any longer the website hasn't been updated the one individual sky guo has connection as the as the um, as a co-founder of omfif a co-founder of omfif that is intriguing quite intriguing so i'm not sure what to think about these guys they seem pretty sketchy this chinese company uh working in new york set up a set up shop in new york sorry working with the federal reserve why this seems like a rug pull like a rug pull too there could be some good opportunity to make some money there uh but you might end up losing money in the end i'm i personally am going to stay clear of it because i don't know what it is and if i don't know what it is i don't feel safe putting my money there i'm not trying to you know gamble with it i'm not trying to get the dice you know and fucking shoot it at the walls there i'm not into that kind of investing that's not my style anyways until i i do appreciate you guys joining please like Please subscribe. Please share this content. Get this news out there. I know you guys respect this. Recognize or remember this face. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Make it major moves. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves.